Hi, welcome to the show. I'm happy that you pressed play, and I appreciate you listening. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, contact me. Ask me, please. All right, so welcome to the Podcast Engineering Show. My name is Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for companies, and I also teach at Podcast Engineering School. And every week on this show, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. I interview podcast producers and engineers, and every other week, I do these solo daily goodie episodes, like the one you're hearing right now, where I'm going to talk about 13 to 14 of the daily goody, daily goody blog posts that I write every day. And you can receive these daily goodies in your email. You can get them daily or a weekly roundup. You can sign up at podcastengineeringschool.com. And as a reminder, the next Podcast Engineering School semester starts April 28th, 2020. At the end of this episode, you're going to hear something funny. Remember, uh, well, I don't know if you heard last episode uh, with Stephanie Lesher, uh, production manager at WRLT Lightning 100 in Nashville, and she works with David Hooper, and we talked about, we were we were sort of wishing upon a star that we could hear some David Hooper bloopers. Well, guess who emailed me some of his own bloopers? <laughs> yeah, David Hooper. All right, so we're going to hear them at the end. Let's get into these daily goodies. We're going to start with the one from January 3rd, which is acoustic panels for your walls. All right. Well, as you know, in podcast, in podcasting in general, most people, they don't have a recording studio, right? They're just sitting in their office or they're sitting in a, some room that has a computer, right? And it's not really like a studio, so a lot of people put up, you know, sound deadening things like curtains and furniture and thick carpeting and stuff. But you can actually get these acoustic panels for your walls and sort of attach them to your walls. And what they do is they absorbed a lot of they absorb a lot of the reflections. So there's less, you know, reflections and reverb bouncing around the room. So there's a few. I actually use a this big. It's kind of nasty looking egg crate foam. Uh, there's a, the link to it is in the, the daily goodie post for this. January 3rd, acoustic panels for your walls. And so I use them because they're really big and they're cheap. It's like less than 50 bucks for this huge piece of foam and it's thick. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't look great. But anyway, there's other companies that make foam that actually looks good. One issue with that, though, is that it's expensive. <laughs> So there's one, there's a company called Audemute and Audemute.com. They make a bunch of stuff. Uh, in fact, Liz Covart has an Audemute. It's almost like a whole themed uh, setup or, you know, foam setup in her, her recording space. Uh, GIK Acoustics is another one. And from the comments, Brian Ensminger that wrote that he would add Auralex. Oralex. Okay, well, so anyway, you can get foam for your walls. If you want it to look good, you can get some good-looking foam to absorb the sound reflections, but it's going to cost you. It really is going to cost you. I mean, like I said, I have these big things. I have big pieces of foam. They're probably six feet by seven feet. Huge. And it, it's literally less than 50 bucks. But for 50 bucks with these other companies, you'll probably get like a little, like a like a one by one foot by one foot little tiny piece of foam to put on the wall, or maybe you'll get a few of them. It's really expensive. Okay, next and if again, if you have any uh, resources for foam for the walls, please comment on the post. All right, next daily goodie: Acoustica Tan. All right, the company is Acoustica. The plugin is called Tan. It's a free compressor plugin from Acoustica. So I've well, actually, I have not tried this compressor, but I did buy a few other plugins from Acoustica, and they're a really great plugin company. And when you down when you want to install their plugins, you have to download their installer. It's called Aquarius, but you can get Tan for free. I think you could still get what's that other one that was free? Celestial. Yeah, that's it. That might still be free. Anyway. These are good plugins. Uh, Tan is a compressor. I haven't tried it, but 
you know, look, if you need a compressor, maybe one that's a little better than the one that's in your DAW, hey, it's free. Okay, next daily goodie. If a guest connects over the internet using a bad quality microphone. Okay, so here's just a little insider information here. When I'm conducting recording sessions for my clients, I obviously I end up connecting with and sound checking many guests throughout every week. And so I come across all different scenarios of people, you know, guests trying to connect and with whatever equipment they have, with whatever computer they have and all that. So I, I see a lot. I hear a lot. I have to coach a lot of people through this. And so one thing that happens is when the, per, when the guest first connects, right, keep in mind, it's, an, it's a guest. They don't know anything. They're not prepared. They do the best they can. It's okay. But sometimes when they connect, if they have a bad microphone, like maybe they're using the computer microphone or maybe they're using their earbuds, but it sounds really bad. You know, one thing you should do, ask them if they have any other microphones. This sounds kind of stupid, and, and it's something that you would intuitively, intuitively do in the moment anyway, probably. But I, I have to ask a lot of people, like, what microphones do you have? Because here's the thing. Some people, a lot of people, will connect with their earbuds, or they'll try to connect using their laptop, you know, the built-in laptop microphone, when they have a perfectly good microphone in a desk drawer. So I'll ask them, like, hey, do you have any other microphones? They'll be like, oh, yeah, I have this uh, a blue snowball right here. And it's like, well, okay, that's not the best mic, but it's better than talking into the computer mic. Anyway, the point of this post was just ask people, ask guests what mics they have, because they might say, oh, I have a I have an RE20 right here. But and, you know, we've talked about it before. For some reason, when people guest on podcasts, even if they have a good mic setup, for some reason, they love to lay on their couch with crappy Wi-Fi and crappy earbuds and, and feel that they're the guest. They are special. I'm the guest. I'm going to lay down during this interview. That's how cool I am. I don't know why they do that, but they do. All right. Next daily goodie. Turning off your HVAC system when recording. Okay, so obviously your HVAC system is your heat or an, an air conditioning, right? In your home, if you live in a home. Uh, and sometimes in the room you're in, in the room you're recording in, there'll be air vents and the air, you know, shh, you know, when you turn on your mics and you start recording, you'll hear these air vents. So one of the things you could do, <laughs> you could, is turn off the HVAC system in your whole house. If you're going to record for 15 minutes or a half hour or even an hour, I guess you could do it. Um, I've done it a few times because I'm in my basement here. It's a finished basement, but the, 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 the heating unit and the HVAC unit is like, it's across the house, but it's still, you know, in the basement. So it's kind of close, but not really close, but, and it makes noise. And like, for instance, in this episode right now, right now, there's no HVAC running in the background. So if I'm quiet, you literally won't hear anything, but I'll, when it kicks on in a few minutes, I'll, I'll try to pause then too. Uh, but, Actually, I'll probably use a slight gate on my voice, so you might not hear it, but you might hear the remnants of it. Anyway, so the point is, if your air vents are making a lot of noise or your HVAC system, you can just turn the whole thing off during your recording sessions um, or not. But if it's bad, you might want to turn it off. But I know you might not want to turn off the whole house, you know, the, the, the air in the whole house. So, you know, I'm just saying this is an option, right? I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying it's an option. Uh, certainly, if you're ever going to do any voiceover type recording, right? If you're trying to record audio that's like really high quality, like voiceover quality. In those cases, I would definitely turn it off. Like make sure there's zero background noise and all that stuff. Anyway, hope that helps. All right. Next daily goodie. EQing intro music. All right, well, intro music, okay, most of us podcasters, we get our intro music from these royalty-free sites or stock music tracks and stuff like that. And when you buy stock music like that, it's already been mixed and mastered 
and 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 the mastering is the is the key distinction there. It's already been mastered, so it already has been compressed and limited, and you know, a little bit of high end added to it, probably a little bit of low end added to it. You know, typical mastering thing. So what happens is when you bring these tracks, these royalty free music tracks, into your podcast episode session template, whatever. A lot of times these these music tracks can sound too bright or they can sound too boomy, too much low end. So what ha- it's a really good uh, fix to slightly EQ the music if you have to. Just EQ. So if there's too much low end on your, on your intro music, just roll off a little bit of low end. It'll help clear it up and it'll allow the, the voice, your voice or the, or the announcer voice, whatever it is, or any voice on the podcast... It'll allow that voice to come through a little more clearly. Same thing with the high frequencies. A lot of times, mas- these mastered tracks, the high end is so clear and sharp and it, it almost hurts kind of thing. So you can literally roll off a little high end or even EQ, you know, from five or six or seven kilohertz up. Just do shelving EQ, bring it down a little. My point is you can match the music to better to better mix with the voices. You can EQ the music slightly so that it sounds better with the voices. Anyway, that's the point. I hope that made sense. All right, next one. The types of ums that you should not remove. Wow, in the title? Wow, on the website, the title, I guess there's a line break. Anyway, should dash N slash T, shouldn't. Should, shouldn't. Anyway, weird. So anyway, okay, as podcast producers and editors, we often talk about removing ums, right? And of course, lots of guests join shows and they just, it's an um fest, right? It's just, they just, it's such a verbal crutch, like every third word is um. And yeah, in those cases, you got to remove a lot. But there are types of ums or occasions in the episode when an um should should be there. You should not remove it. So when is that? Well, one is if it's informations. Inform, sorry, if it's information. Sometimes when a guest is pensive and they're thinking really hard about what to say next and they say, um, you might want to leave that in so that the listener can feel the guest thinking and struggling, et cetera, right? It's that like if you ask someone a really hard question and they're thinking about it and they go um those you should leave in because that actually it's conveying information to the listener that hey I got to think about this and wow or wow I never thought about this kind of thing right okay another uh another example of an um you should leave in is has to do with content sometimes the word um can be part of a joke or a punchline so you wouldn't want to remove that right so if if the person meant to say, um, then of course you shouldn't remove it. I know that one's kind of obvious and self-explanatory, but, um, another, see, I said, um, and I'm not going to remove it. Uh, natural pacing is another thing. Like if someone has a natural pacing and somehow the ums just fit in and maybe they're not so distracting or maybe there's not too many of them, eh, then maybe you might want to leave them in. And uh, Mike Thomas in the comments says, if there's an um that merges into dialogue where it would sound worse to remove it, then leave it in. Yeah, that's uh, that's sort of like the technical aspect of removing an um. Like when someone says, uh, well, the classic example is and dumb, and dumb, and dumb, and dumb. So it's it's very difficult, basically impossible to remove that um because then the, the word and that's left is going to sound really unnatural. So if you, if you cut out an um and it sounds really badly unnatural, then just leave it in. It's actually better you leave it in. All right, next post is, oh, the Podcasters Lounge. By the way, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, Podcasters Lounge, please join us. We have fun. We do live streams. Okay, next daily goodie. And and by the way, in the back of your mind, are you still anticipating those Dave the Hooper bloopers? David Hooper's bloopers? <laughs> okay, next daily goodie. Auphonics dynamic range controls. 
All right, Auphonic's dynamic range controls. Right, Auphonic is a great service. A lot of podcasters use it to set their final episodes to the correct Luff's loudness level. And But there's a one thing that Auphonic can do. It can actually sort of compress the audio so that it's a certain, has a certain range, a, a certain dynamic range in terms of dB. And it's measured in RMS dB, uh, which is very similar to Luff's. Okay, so... And there's a graph on this post. I, I'm probably going to do a bad job of describing the graph, but go look at this post from January 9th on the website, podcastengineeringschool.com, and you'll see that there's a graph showing what the, the dynamic range is of, mu- of, of, of a podcast episode and then also when people turn off the episode because the, it, it's, they can't, it's too annoying to listen to. It's too dynamic. Right. We've talked a lot about this. If there's a podcast that gets really loud and then it gets really soft, it's so difficult to listen to, especially in noisy environments that people give up. They literally they turn it off. They're like, I can't listen to this. I I can't hear it. And it's hurting my ears. You know, it hurts my ears one second and then I can't hear it the next second. It's terrible. So in Auphonic, you can tell Auphonic to set your audio at a certain dynamic range level. So I'd say uh, problem. So from the graph, people start turning off the episode once the audio gets to about six dB of dynamic range and above. So six dB is still kind of mid range. Not well, it's no six dB is even a little too much, but six or seven or eight or nine or 10. It's way too much. People just turn it off. So I would recommend and, and from what I think actually sounds good is between four and five dB of dynamic range. So you can actually use Auphonic and set your episodes to that dynamic range. And that'll be great because listeners, they won't tune out. They won't turn it off because it's annoying. All right. Cool feature in Auphonic, right? I was so happy when they, when they developed that and they've had it for a while now, but it's one of the advanced features in Auphonic. All right, the next one. Oh, Bandrew Scott on my sh- on this show, episode one sixty four. Have you heard that one? That was a great one. Thank you, Bandrew. Next daily goodie: the actual proper specifications for HTML episode notes in your RSS feed. All right, and this this is a little technical, and so we're not really going to talk about it. But there's it, it's from James Cridland at Pod News. He wrote a really helpful article. And there's a link to the article on uh, on this daily goodie from January 10th. So check out James's article on that. It really, um, you know, the actual proper specifications for HTML episode show notes. Yeah, pretty good to know, especially if stuff, especially if your show notes aren't showing up properly in the apps. Of course, Spotify is an exception because I think Spotify, even when you have everything set properly, I think Spotify still jumbles your show notes and make them makes them look terrible or something. I don't know. I don't, I guess I should look, but uh, you know, <laughs> my show notes are simple and whatever. Okay. Next daily goodie sound ID. Okay. Sound ID. It's an app from sonar works and they're giving limited early access. I don't know when it's going to be formally released, but it says uh, sound ID. It's an app is a paradigm shift in sound technology, delivering listeners perfect audio through personalization. Yeah, so it's basically an app-based, it's an app which sort of, in a way, it sort of tests your hearing, or it figures, it, it, it tests you to figure out what kind of, what type of sound you like in terms of EQ curves, and then it'll actually apply an EQ curve to everything you're listening to on that device. Uh, now, for for professional audio production, this real this app doesn't really apply. Um, it could, I guess, if you were like, I mean, but are you really gonna mix a podcast episode on your phone? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have a multi-track DAW open on your phone mixing? No, I don't think so. But anyway, check out the app. I wanted to check it out, but when I tried to use it, um, the 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 earbuds I was using. So so when you open the app, Sound ID. It asks you what headphones you're using because they 
Sonarworks is the company behind this. They actually have EQ curves for all different types of headphones, which is really cool. But the thing is, I'm listening on my phone with this app, and I wanted to use my earbuds. But when you when in the app, when you have to choose your profile, you have to choose what headphone profile you want to use. I couldn't find the pro. There was no profile for my earbuds. There was only profiles for actual like studio headphones. So then I was like, well, I'm never going to use studio headphones with my phone. So then for, so for me, it was a little, I don't know. It, I guess it doesn't quite serve my use case or maybe I'm not doing it right. I don't know. Anyway, Ed Sullivan tried it out. By the way, he's a podcast engineering school graduate and alumni. He tried it out and uh, I guess he ran it through some tests that they do and uh, I'll quote Ed Sullivan, quote, the app says my preference is one type, which is neutral bass, mids, and highs, a type that's balanced across the spectrum. Typically, this sound is preferred by sound engineers and those who enjoy music closest to what the artist originally intended. Okay, end quote. Uh, so, right? That's pretty cool, Ed. Glad you tried it, man. Thanks for sharing your uh, experience there. So if anyone else, if you try Sound ID, Please put a comment on that daily goodie post. I'd love to hear what your experience with sound ID. Next daily goodie. Should you use a gate before or after a compressor? Should you use a gate before or after a compressor? And th this is the shortest blog post I ever wrote. It's only two sentences and it's only two words. Each sentence is one word, right? That's possible. Right? I think. Okay. So, should you use a gate before or after a compressor? Before. Always. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Always use a gate before compression. That's just fundamental. Although, but I will say with a little asterisk, look, you can do whatever you want for whatever effect you want, okay? But, fundamentally speaking... You always use a gate before compression. Okay, next daily goodie, Samson Q9U. It's a new microphone, Samson Q9U. Well, we all know the Samson Q2U, which is an awesome USB microphone. It's, well, it's actually USB and XLR, both. And uh, so the Q2U is, has been awesome for a long time. Uh, but now the Q9U is coming soon. It's not out yet, I don't believe. Uh, Alan Tepper actually wrote an article about it, which is linked uh, from this Daily Goodie post from January 13th. So check it out. It's, um, oh, someone asked how much it costs. It's around 200 bucks. And again, it has XLR and USB, but now it has up to 24-bit, 24-bit, 96 kilohertz with zero latency monitoring. So I'm assuming it's a Q2U, but you know, significantly better. Anyway, that's the Q9U. We'll wait to see. I'm sure Bandrew, once it comes out, he'll review it. Next one, OC White Podcast Pro Boom Arm. Yeah, it's a boom arm from this company, OC White. And I'm, I pretty much in my mind decided I'm going to buy one. You know, I don't know if I'm going to buy the Podcast Pro Boom Arm or if I'm going to buy one of their, I'll probably buy one of their other boom arms, which is more expensive. I think, in fact, speaking of Ed Sullivan, I think he bought one, like a, you know, one for broadcasting or something, not the Podcast Pro, and I think it's around $320 or $350 for a boom arm, but he said it's awesome, and other people said they're just awesome, so I kind of want one, so anyway, it's linked in the Daily Goodie here. Next Daily Goodie, well, this is my, my reigning favorite plug-in. If you were curious, Chris, what is your favorite plugin on Earth? Because I do have other favorite plugins on other planets, but on Earth right now, it's Aquamarine 4 from Acoustica. It's a high end mastering and mixing plugin suite. So it's a little, it's an EQ. And well, the EQ is part of it, but the, the main part of it is a, a dual stage compressor. It's actually two compressors. It is awesome. I I don't. I'm just gonna gush over it if I keep talking. But anyway, it's a great plugin. Um, I don't think it, it's not cheap. 
but it's just great. I mean, it's hard to, ex- it's h- really hard to explain what makes it like why a really great compressor sounds great. It's hard to explain, but you know, after you've tried, I mean, literally in my life, I've probably heard at least a hundred compressors, right? Maybe a couple hundred. I don't even know, but a lot. I've heard a lot and I haven't heard them all. And I'm not saying I'm awesome and wonderful, whatever. I'm just saying in my life, I've heard a lot of compressors. And so when you hear one and your first reaction is, oh my God, that's awesome. Like that means something. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Next daily goodie. On the way to the Hooper bloopers. I, you know what? I don't want to build them up too much. They're not, they're funny, but they're not, you know, they're not like Opie and Anthony funny or anything. You know what I mean? Okay. Next daily goodie. Crisp with a K. K-R-I-S-P. Crisp. It's a noise canceling app. And it's it's available on Mac, Windows, and iOS. And I heard about it from Justin Brown from Primal Video, who's a guy on YouTube who makes these awesome videos about video and audio. Uh, most It's mostly based around video production and stuff, but obviously audio f- figures into that. Um, and he, he actually tries this crisp app and it's pretty interesting. It's like one of these apps that you can, you know, like if someone's in a noisy place, like you, you've all connected with someone on the phone or through Skype and they're just in a noisy place or whatever. Maybe it's like raining in the background or there's just a lot of background noise or whatever. This app apparently filters out a lot of the background noise. Now, I will say it seemed to work pretty good in Justin Brown's video, but I will say it does, you know, affect the quality of the audio, meaning it it damages the quality of the person's voice. So it'll bring down the background noise, but it also slightly damages the quality of the voice because none of these algorithms are perfect. So it's again, it's one of those things that it's kind of it seems like it would be cool for like consumer use. Like if you had it on your phone and I don't know, maybe it cleans up your phone calls or, you know, makes makes it easier for you to hear other people on the phone or something like in a consumer application, I would say, great, go for it. But as as far as like producing podcast audio or 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 getting people to phone into a podcast and then using that, I mean, it might work okay. I don't know, but it's, you know, I mean, it can't be better than Isotope RX you know, voice denoise or the spectral denoise. So again, if you want to check it out, it might be a fun thing to check out. All right, next one. Are we done? We're done. Wow, we're done. Now it's time for the David Hooper's bloopers. Uh, So thanks, every. Thank you. So if you had any questions about anything I discussed, you can comment on the actual daily goodies. Uh, join the podcasters lounge on Facebook and join our live streams. They're a lot of fun. And also I just started streaming on Twitch for, for this show, really podcast engineering school. So I'm streaming on Twitch. It's uh, if you go to twitch.tv search for podcast engineer, Twitch is awesome by the way, for live streaming. It's so awesome. It it's really, it streams really quickly, meaning from the time for it's only like a two or three second lag between when I say something and when you would hear it on the live stream. So that's cool because then you can comment and I'll see it in like two seconds. So then it it makes it really easy to have like real time discussions, really. So anyway, that's on Twitch. Uh, I'm, I'm really psyched about Twitch. I don't know. I just love Twitch. I love live streaming, but somehow Twitch is just a cool platform. I mean, I don't know if it, if I'm going to get a lot of people on there to watch me or whatever, I really don't know, but I'm just trying stuff. So anyway, all right, let's get into the David Hooper bloopers. So thank you for listening back next week with an awesome interview. All right, David Hooper, take it away, brother. Ambers. What the f Embers. Is it embers or is it ambers? That's kind of sexist, David. Sexist. Sexist. Sex- sexist. It's not sexist. Say it again. Sexist. There's no T. Okay. Sexist. You sexting me? I'm sexting you. All right. That's kind of sexist, David. Sexist. I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, say it again. Sexist. Yeah. That's what I said. Big podcast, blue plant, blue, blue shit. What? All right.
That's in the blooper reel. It's Big Podcast Blueprint. Bloop. Blue, blue, shit. What the? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> like, you, hear, you hear you like throwing off your headphones. <laughs> coming, coming out of a death dedication. Can't even pronounce blueprint. <laughs> oh, see, now you're being funny. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Here we go. And we're back with more when we come back. 